What's up guys, it's Project, bringing you guys what you've all been waiting for. It is finally here, the new 3.0 meta longsword builds have arrived. With 3.0 we were all hoping to escape the now dominant Tigrex meta, and well, that domination may have just come to a screeching halt. So today I'm going to cover the builds, damage test, and some calc junk for you too. So hold on to your sheaths tight, cause I'm jamming my sword right in. Before that, just know the builds will mostly use talismans like this. QS 2-3 with 3-2 or 2-2 slots. Is best in slot for most longsword builds now. So get on that charm grind as you'll need them to be optimal. I have heard you can get quick she with 2-2 slots from Moonbow, so perhaps consider that as an alternative to mystery. And just in case, I will provide a budget version or two, using a basic charm, but you'll lose damage. For pets, as I mentioned in nearly all my videos, get a fighter kitty with rousing roar and power drum. It'll give lots of damage boost to make some builds become way stronger, and likewise, try to get a dog or even two dogs in some builds cases with status attack up, knockout king, and a parasol weapon. From there, it's your choice between heal blade scroll for heals or heavy strike scroll for more KOs. Treat the pets like they're a part of your build. So with that out of the way, build all, start all! I suppose we have to start with the strongest build to make a point. Enter Ancient Val. That's right, after making my GS meta video, I continued using the Val Strax set out of curiosity, and lo and behold, it is the best set for Longsword. Likewise, with 3.0, Camellios Mirage got an upgrade to level 7, giving it the small boost it needed to beat out Tigrex, but only by a smidge. Sookbine boost is still OP, but because of Val's limited slots and stuff, Tigrex can't take advantage of the set as much as Kami can, as Tigrex really needed the crit stacking. So, Kami Whammy, Jammer Lammy. But with the charm, I get full crit boost, full quick sheave, handy 1, and PP2 to keep that white safe as long as possible. In total, with Max Might 1 and Wex activated, you have 75% crit. Throw in a Rousing Roar Cat, and you're at a hundo, baby! For budget version, you'll need a quick sheave 2 with just one level 2 slot, which is very easy to get from Moombo, sacrificing the max might. But again, after Kitty Roars, you'll be at 95% crit, which is good enough. Which speaking of, if you are fine with the 5% variable there, you could rock Critical Eye 1 so you don't have the condition of needing to be full stam, or you could opt for PP3, which will make your white sharpness last even longer, which equals more DPS. So your choice there with that for the pro version. Now, it is testing time. So, the Val set, TLDR, it gives you an insane damage boost if below 80% HP and wearing 5 pieces. This buff actually outdamages any other setup. I'm not even gonna factor resentment, but solely the 80% for the Resuscitate and Dragonheart buff. With Resentment, it definitely outdamages everything. Greatsword took advantage of it by being able to hyper armor with the set, whereas with Longsword, your goal is to dip to 80 and then quick sheave and foresight your way out of damage to retain the damage buff and not die. And well, there's the small bonus of this set having the highest defense in the game. So you can get hit with multiple apex attacks and not be killed as easily as other builds. Just make sure that if you do heal, to stop the heal with a roll before you pass 70 to 80% HP. Don't top off to full as it'll disable the buffs, and then you have to get hit again to drop back down. So anyways, first a Helmbreaker demonstration using all three speedrun buffs. With Red Gauge and Dragonheart activated, you get a whopping 383 attack stat before Resentment, which is insane. And for the big reveal, you hit for 231 Helmbreaker crits. And for funsies, let's toss in Resentment buff, and now you get 241 for maximum damage and a juicy nearly 400 attack stat. So yeah, this is the power of the Valstrak set. Now, I will do a DPS test like I did for my 2.0 video, with the same Hellbreaker cycle, but I'll do that towards the end to have all three setups back to back for more clarity. As far as a quick calc, you have this site here, which will be linked in the description. It has Dragonheart, but for some reason, its Resuscitate and Resentment modifiers don't do anything. Maybe bugged, but still, 454, with the 8 raw being the ramp up attack 3. If I manually add the 20 attack from Resuscitate, it bumps it up to 492. Let's add in Rousing Roar Kitty to get a whopping 520 without resentment still. Broken. 
So next build is of course Tigrex. Ultimately, Kami will be better DPS by a small amount, even with Rousing Roar activated. But if you wanted the biggest numbers possible while still being top 3 DPS, this is the build. Tigrex will not have to waste slots on PP or handicraft since it comes with white sharpness, so you can focus on getting crit chance, although because of PP2 for Kami, it'll stay longer in white. Now, the only good crit in the limited slots for Val's set are Max Might and Latent Power, so I chose Max Might. People make a case of Might being kind of conditional, but it's not really if you actually use it right. Furthermore, you can drink something like Dash Juice or hit Environmental Stamina Butterflies to ensure you stay tip-top. If Bo can use it, why can't other builds using Max Might do it too? But anyways, that is the Tigrex version. This one uses a Quick Sheaf level 3 with a 2 in 1 slot, so a little harder to get than Kami's. The old 2.0 version using normal sets basically did not get upgraded at all aside maybe a Crypt Boost 3, which was not enough to compete, so not gonna bother mentioning it here, as both these builds will out damage it now, especially when it comes to non soakbind attacks. Although Valstrax is only unlocked at HR 100, so the 2.0 Tigrix build will still be the best build to that point. And now for Tigrix test, naturally due to Silkbind boost, Tiggy's Helmbreakers will be the highest. As far as attack stat, even with buffs, it's barely different from Kami. But because of Silkbind boost, you get a whopping 256 off the bat, no resentment. Now with resentment, oh baby, I'm gonna cream, it's 267. <sighs> a lot of damage, but because of the much lower crit, it's just not consistent enough. With Rousing Roar against the weak spot, you're looking at 90% crit though, so if you want to go Tiggy, you need a Rousing Roar cat, definitely. And the last raw build is normal Kami. This Kami actually beats out Val Tiggy by a smidge. Although, because it effectively gets near 100% crit anyways, both the Val Kami and Val Tiggy builds will overpower it once Kitty roars but this is a nice build with double healing dogs. By losing a crit eye, you gain PP2, which upkeeps the white to boost DPS. This one was surprising when it comes to the DPS test, so look forward to that soon. But yeah, not much else to say, but here's some calcs, and Kami does get a respectable 477, which is consistent and doesn't require any conditions. Now, before the test, I do want to mention elemental longswords. With the Val builds, there is basically no need to bother with any other build. They will usually beat them all, especially when you factor hit zones and the cat. The only one that may be sort of worth it is Diora's Sword. Here's the build with the test in the background. Against Rajang or any 30 hit zone weak Ice Mon, it will still lose in damage, but because it can get 100% crit with this build, if you factor in Kushala's Soul, which is a 25-30% to 30 boost, perhaps over time, if you can consistently hit the head of Rajang, it'll be comparable or possibly even beating it out by a smidge. But otherwise, any 20 weak Mon or, or Mon with a not easy to hit hit zone to activate that element, then just go with Val. And like sure, Apex Diablos has a 25 Ice weak head, but majority of your hits are going to be under the belly or against her legs when countering, dropping damage considerably. The same echoes for the other elemental swords people hyped about. Kimura's sword is not that good, at least compared to the builds today. It'll reach 100% crit, but its raw is much too low, kind of similar to Narga. Now it does get anti-aerial and anti-aquatic, giving it some hope of comparing. But upon comparing, Against the Moldron, a fish monster, and is weak to fire, it still can't beat out Ancient Val, and its affinity advantage won't hold out for much of the battle with the cat. And yeah, same thing for Valstrike's Longsword, etc, etc, you get the picture. Elementals can't really compete. For Rampage, however, perhaps you could settle for Teostra's Longsword for the status ailment submissions. So, let's end this baby with a DPS test endurance style. We'll start off from the worst, and then to the best. First, Val Tiggy. The basis of the test is to start with Helmbreaker and then end with Helmbreaker for a total of 5 Helmbreakers against the turtle's head using double draw slash into phase slash into spear blade combo in between. I tried to get most of the spear slash attacks on the belly part of the dummy and all Helmbreakers hit the head. This test this time is with speedrun buffs but still no food or cats and no resentment for the Val builds.
And for Tiggy, it gets a nice score of 11,246. This beats out the new but still old Tiggy build, which got 10,939 with speedrun buffs. So the Val build is now better than the old Tiggy build. Now moving on to normal Kami, which again has a 95% crit total. So this is pretty much capped out compared to the Val builds that not only get improvements from cats, but also resentment. This time I'll speed up the sequence since you already know the rotation, and by the end of it, Kami gets an impressive 11,372. Very nice score, but as I said, this is its limit. And lastly, we got the reigning champion, the Ancient Val build, which has 75% crit here. Again, no resentment or cap buffs. Overall, the scores will have some minor variants based off the crit procs, but this should give you a general idea of how powerful these new builds are compared to the normal setups from 2.0. And the Ancient Val gets a grand total of 11,410. So essentially, all of them are pretty neck and neck with a variance of about 100 or so total damage, except the Val builds are way tankier, can still get 25 to 30% crit from external buffs, and don't have that extra fitting attack from resentment factored into the test. So overall, the Val builds are the best builds in the game now. One major dent against the Val builds is multiplayer. Many times people will have dogs with heal scrolls, or a hunting horn user will heal you, or an SNS user with wide range will heal you as well. As soon as you bump back above 80% HP, you're screwed and then something like the normal cami build will be more ideal. So, for solo, go Val. For multi, go normal. Unless you have a dedicated team with communication where you can prevent those healing factors. I imagine an all Val squad would wreck face with the monsters not being able to focus on you, allowing you to safely stay in the 80 under. But yeah, that is the new meta for Longsword. Embrace it as it'll stick around for many months unless Capcom adds more monsters or finally gives Apex some f***ing gear. If you want to see Great Swords rendition of 3.0, check it out in the end screen annotations or pinned comments. Bow 3.0 will be next, followed by the others. I also want to get into Dual Blades eventually too. So, if you want to see more videos like that, or you like this video, Crimson Glow that like button. Comment down below what you guys think of the new meta. Do you like the idea of a new monster dominating the setups? Do you wish Apex monsters had relevant gear sets? If so, let's do a petition. Just kidding. Anyways, if you guys want to see videos like this ASAP as soon as they are made, make sure to subscribe and EI Spirit slash that bell so you're actually notified for more Rise Epicness.